we haven't talked in a little while on camera. So since we talked, the whole Drake and Meek Mill thing happened. Uh-huh. I interviewed Obi Trice recently. Right. And, and he told me that he thought that Meek won that shit. He thought that, you know, from a from a lyricist point of view, and, and Obi's a lyricist. Right. Definitely. Right. He thought that Meek just came harder. As a lyricist, if you were to look at Drake versus Meek Mill right now in terms of the songs they released, who would you say, you know, is winning from your I th- point of view? I think, I think Meek won. I think Meek won, and I think that people that, that actually think Drake won, that charged up was whack as fuck to me. I didn't like that. I didn't like back to back. It, it really wasn't, the nigga ain't really saying shit. Like, you, niggas, niggas gotta listen to fucking Meek, man. Listen to what he did, man. Like, like listen to what he doing. The double XL joint, the, sh- the shit he came out when he first got out of jail, the, the, the ice cream shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, dog, like, that's hip, that's that shit. Hmm. What's your take as a lyricist? I think, uh, you know, Drake, I think he played chess very well with the situation. Yeah. And I think he had a lot of time to sit back and strategize it, you know, and really think about how he wanted to strike. It felt like Meek was on the road. It felt like he was on tour. It hmm. felt like, you know, he was having to... It was rushed. Yeah, he had to, you know, respond on the public's time instead of his own time. He just started, though. You know, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> without even without even taking sides, you know, my whole thing was just as a hip-hop fan looking at the whole situation and as a lyricist, you know, um, it wasn't like any any song was hit him up or no Vaseline or, yeah. you know what I'm saying, or, you know, one of those M songs talking about Benzino or some shit. It was just like more, um, it was it was pretty, it was interesting to see how, you know, calculated Drake was though. I gotta really salute him on, he was organized with that attack, man. <laughs> he was very organized. I mean, down to wearing the fucking tennis shoes that match up with what he's talking about. It was crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I didn't really. It wasn't like crazy takeover ether to me. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. just more like we got a little beef and everybody's watching it. Not even beef. We got a little spat and everybody's watching it. You know. I think I like Meek and I like Drake. I, I for, but for for real though, like I think the 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 win that people aren't looking at when it comes to Meek is. Even though Drake don't give a fuck, he's going to be a gazillionaire and, and, a, and a Grammy winning artist and whatever else you want to, you don't give a fuck. But in that barbershop, again, back to that barbershop, mm-hmm. if you don't write your own shit, you, you come down that list of the greats. And that was actually going to be my next question. Well, first of all, do you always write your shit down before you go in the booth? No. No. Do you go off the head I sometimes? Haven't, I haven't written just like written in years. Okay. In years. So, do you just hop in the booth? I hop in the booth, and I usually piece shit together. You okay. Know, in the booth. Okay. <clears throat> have you ever had someone else? Never. <laughs> I didn't have to finish the sentence, did I? Never. <laughs> never ever. Nah. I've no. Never, I've no never. one ever said. Hey, what? Well, what, what if you what if you say it like this instead, or or, or well, something like that? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've I've seen that argument too online, as far as with the stuff. But when you hear the refs. And you know, I write songs for people, but I don't really talk about who I write songs for. But okay. when you send somebody a reference, even if they switch up a few lines, you generally wrote that song. It's still Especially reference. if it's your melody okay. that they're delivering it in, your cadence, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So, so you. That's something different than throwing around ideas in the yeah. lab. Like, I've heard people, you know, try yeah. to put that in there. But like I said, man, I mean, shit. Dre said he don't even consider himself a rapper. And to me, he's one of the best. He's, I, he can deliver the fuck out of a rap, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I enjoy listening to Dre, Dr. Dre's music, and I know that he hasn't probably wrote any of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. so but you've, you've written for other people. Mm-hmm. You've done whole references, everything else like that. Yes. The whole nine. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. So so th- this this is interesting, but no one's ever done that for you. No. Okay. So were you at all disappointed that these references came out and no one really seemed to care? No one in terms of the po- the, the general public seemed to care. Even even Beanie Siegel said whatever. Yeah. I, I don't I don't care if Drake don't write his raps. I like his shit anyways. And Beanie Siegel is considered one of the best to ever do it. Right. It's it's every that's he's everybody's entitled to their own opinions. I mean, me personally, yeah, I was disappointed. You were disappointed because I'm a big Drake fan, and 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 I'm not just a fan of what he of his music. I was a fan of how he, you know, put the lyrics together too. So now, you know, I don't know if he put those lyrics together. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, I mean. It just is what it is. I mean, like it was a, it was a, it was a silence in the car <laughs> when we were driving. I was in New York, you know, when Flex played the first one, and everybody in the car just went silent. Who's in the car? No, nope, not no rappers. Oh, okay, okay, I was just cool. with some people. And okay, some of my New York peoples, and uh, it just was a silence because it was like, damn, because you want people to. Be everything. If you're a fan of this shit, you yeah. want that motherfucker to be everything they talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Easy. Gotta have a six four. Right. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. You can't be cruising down the street. No Cadillac cruising down the street. No truck. You gotta be cruising down the street <laughs> right. in a six four. Right. Because because we were previously we were talking about how disappointed I was when I interviewed Alonzo Williams from the World Class Wrecking Crew. Yeah. And he told me that. Ice Cube never banged. Ice Cube, you know, was essentially a good kid and just saw a few things around him. It, it, it kind of crushed me because of how much I got into Ice Cube's lyrics. Yeah. It, it kind of crushed me on the inside. Ice Cube was a great kid, just a nice kid. So Ice Cube wasn't gang banging at all. No, no. Was it was it a little weird hearing about all this gang banging stuff from someone that doesn't gang bang at all? Fuck me up. Yeah. It fuck the fuck who who I'm like. You like, got to be bullshit. Like, so I was like, gangster, gangster. Like, I thought Ice Cube was the most gangster motherfucker on the planet. You know what? I thought gang- Ice Cube come in here to kill everybody. You know, you know what? what I mean? <laughs> He's a great actor. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and I mean, and I felt the same. I felt, I was like, damn, dog, he didn't write that joint. Yeah. Because because some, what you got to understand is I'm an artist. So when I listen to shit, I'm listening to delivery, too. Like, yo, this dude just flipped his whole delivery into some next shit. And then it's like somebody says, nah, he didn't do that. That was this dude's delivery. Yeah, that's oh, Quentin Miller. Fuck, man. But at the same time, we don't know what he's written, what he hasn't written. Will it stop me from ultimately being a fan? No, because he has an ear and he can entertain his ass off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it won't, it won't stop me from being a fan ultimately. And I get shit from the lyricist community in the underground that people don't want to come out because I'm always so vocal about being a big Drake fan. It's like, oh man, you Drake fan? What the fuck's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Not, nah, I am. I, the dude. Me too. I'm a Drake crafts, fan. Yeah. He crafts some fucking shit, man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You can't so, have that many hit singles yeah. and just not know what the fuck you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, but like I said, man, I, I my whole thing is these are just my opinions. Yeah. You know, these are just my opinions. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not looking to incite riots and shit. You know what I mean yeah. with the shit I say, but it's just my opinion. Um, he's still a great, a great artist, and you know it did it did it disappointed me a little bit. Well, I, I like you know I mentioned this before in other interviews. I bet his bank account ain't disappointed. Though. Yeah, <laughs> his bank account is great. <laughs> you know, and one of the things that gets mentioned actually is. Well, you know, because I'm actually a Meek fan also. Like a yeah. lot of times when, when I was doing interviews where people tell me who's your favorite rapper right now, I'd say Meek Mill. Like, right. you know, because I really fuck with Meek. Right. But like <clears throat> one of the things that we talked about, you know, just among among my friends was that when Meek came back with uh, uh, Wanna Know, mm-hmm. when he starts talking about his Roly, yeah. <laughs> it was like, come on, man. Like, you, you're not competing with Drake in the money department. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So it was almost like, the crafting of the mm-hmm. song was just a little bit off. But yeah, I think it's that tour, man, that tour the, the life. That tour, that tour life. But what I, what I was going to say is, like, for example, there's a, a new Sprite campaign. Oh, you God, know what I'm talking like, about? The, the, the Sprite campaign, yeah. which has Biggie, 
Nas, yeah. Rakim, and Drake. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So people are grouping Drake into this best ever category. Right. But but the one difference between Drake and all those other people on that <laughs> billboard is that none of the rest of them have ever been accused of not writing their own shit. Right. Like if you find out that Eric B actually wrote half of Rakim's lyrics. Yeah, you're gonna be you know, or you know, like, like that, when that, they was, when they when they <laughs> try to have that little rumor about somebody writing for Nas. Oh yeah, he addressed it right away. Man, because it's like, yo, you can't. That's that's not happening, man. Yeah. You know that right there would have threw me into a fucking fit. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I mean, this is our religion, hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, nah, man. Those scriptures had to be handwritten by the God <laughs> <laughs> on parchment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> With the blood of his enemies. <laughs> <laughs> For real, because I was like, dog. But uh, yeah, yeah, and it's funny because you know he's up there, so you gotta, you know, you never know is that somebody else's rhymes that are actually being in those quotations on the billboard, you know. But like I said, this is a business, you know, and ultimately it's about making music that people enjoy. And you know, Barry Gordy came in the room with seven to six, seven producers, and they made classics all together. Everybody made, you know had input on the music being made and you know rap is is and hip hop is a billion dollar industry too so you know they get seven people in the room and see who you know what kind of hot shit they can make to make hits man yeah. and when you're in the hit making business you know that is how the sessions go down now me I don't give a fuck about making hits I give a fuck about spitting hard shit and talking real life shit yeah. That's what I give a fuck about. So I don't need seven people in the room with me when I'm making some shit. You know what I'm saying? All yeah. I need to do is see what the fuck is going on in the world. Like Donald Trump running for president saying reckless, crazy shit. El Chapo escaping from fucking jail. <laughs> Police killing motherfuckers with their hands in the air. I, that's enough for me to draw what I need for my material because I don't give a fuck about making hit records. Is it a diss or is it not a diss? Nah, it ain't a diss. It's just me stating facts, like, letting you know, like, that that ain't something that we honor. Like, we, ain't, we don't joke about that. Like, we done lost homies over that shit, so it just letting you know I'm stating facts. Like, we never even, he didn't care about that, man. Like, oh, but he was doing a diss record. He yeah, I mean, he, he, I mean, of course, because <laughs> you got to understand, Easy's a smart man, you know what I'm saying? And he always... He always was looking for a way to to gain something from publicity. 